This is Harold Waters, OSU Extension, Field Specialist for Agronomic Systems. And for this segment, we'll talk about soil sampling and what goes on in the lab. So what nutrients can we test for? Um, our real goal is to provide uh, recommendations for uh, our two major macronutrients, that would be phosphorus and potassium. And we do that with uh, using a soil test. Um, in Ohio, we've used the Bray P1 as a soil test we use to calibrate for the uh, tri-state fertility rec recommendations. But today, a, a cheaper, less expensive, easier to run uh, test is used in most of our lab, and that's the Malik 3 test for phosphorus. And there are some comparisons between the two. And in the potassium soil test in the past, we would use the ammonium acetate test. Uh, but it can also be uh, tested for the Malik 3, and uh, typically today it would be run both the Malik 3 for the phosphorus and potassium tests. And then we can also, or should also, measure soil acidity for our lime recommendation. And it's really that buffer test uh, that we use to provide that information for that lime recommendation. But getting a uh, understanding of what our pH is uh, and how it helps us understand how it may affect plant nutrient availability and also how it may affect soil processes. Just a chart here showing on mineral soils uh, what the impact would be for uptake as far as uh, nutrients go. And you can understand from looking at this chart why we generally would like to have a pH of around 6.5 on the chart here on that scale of 1 to 14. And the reason is our availability of our nutrients is, is greatest at that. And you can tell by the width of the, of the bars here for each nutrients. Phosphorus in particular, if you look at it, as you see, get, we get, as we get below a pH of 6.0, a uh, dramatic uh, reduction in the amount of phosphorus that may be available. Um, iron would be another one of consideration as we go to the west uh, where we have some of those high pHs perhaps up in the 8 range or so. They often may have some iron uh, shortages in those plants whereas we do not see something like that typically here in Ohio. But again, uh, pH helps us keep us in a range for uh, good nutrient availability. So what about micronutrients? That's the other nutrients we can test for. And we've learned that soil tests tend not to do a very good job correlating to crop uptake for many of our micronutrients. Uh, soil tests, however, based on uh, recommendations for um, manganese and zinc, however, do correlate fairly well. And we can test for those and get a good approximation of what we ought to be doing as far as those two nutrients go. For other micronutrient deficiencies, we might see them. And then perhaps a little bit of discussion about diagnosis. But typically, we're going to see micronutri micronutrient deficiencies uh, most commonly on our low organic mark soils. That perhaps those are less uh, one and a half to one to one and a half percent um, organic matter content. So those lighter textured soils are where pH is out of uh, the normal ranges. Again, as lows or highs is where we might see some micronutrient deficiencies, as you saw from the chart. Typically, for diagnosis of micronutrient deficiencies, we'd like to do a tissue test plus a soil test and then uh, test the area that's affected and the area nearby that's not affected and do some comparison. And we can often find out what our micronutrient deficiencies are. So the um, selecting a soil testing lab, um, generally speaking, soil testing labs do a very good job. Uh, there's probably 10 to 15 labs that do work uh, for, for uh, soil sampling here in Ohio. And uh, honestly, there's more variation in the uh, collection of the soil sample than there is in the labs. I know uh, about five years ago, OSU sent uh, some blind samples to 13 labs, and uh, 12 of the 13 labs came back within very acceptable ranges. A brief conversation uh, between the state fertility specialist and that other lab kind of corrected some things. If you want to uh, look at the link to uh, soil testing labs, again, there's a couple of references at the end of the video segment here. Uh, look clear at the bottom and you will find uh, a couple of links to those testing labs uh, list, but also how to select one. So relationship um, between soil test phosphorus and uh, loss of uh, phosphorus at, from the edge of the field. So we have these edge of field uh, trials that were studies that we're putting in place, and we're already starting to see some results of that on where we might be leaking some phosphorus. So soil tests can be an indicator of the risk of loss of phosphorus uh, from a water quality standpoint. And we have learned that fields with a high soil test phosphorus does have increased levels of uh, phosphorus leaving in the field. And what we learn at these high legacy soil testing fields, 
And this would typically have been perhaps um, manured fields or livestock operations in the past, particularly those where we have 150 parts per million BRAE P1 soil tests or higher. That is where we get some higher levels of loss of phosphorus in water. Just an example here. This is some uh, work from Kevin King from the edge of field studies from my first couple of years of, of sampling. And what he's done is he's segmented out the low, medium, and high soil test fields here across the chart. So blue would be the low soil testing. Uh, those uh, would be fields that are testing less than 28 parts per million on Malik 3 or less than 15 parts per million on a Bray P1 test. The green in the middle would be the uh, maintenance range, if you will. The 28 to 46 on the uh, Malik test and the 15 to 30 parts per million on a Bray P1 and in greater than 46 parts per million. And you see as we go to those above the agronomic level where we typically uh, require or suggest drawdown applications, so above 46 parts per million Malik 3 or uh, above 30 parts per million Bray P1, we do have a greater loss, maybe double and triple the loss we might have from those level lower levels of uh, phosphorus. So one other potential test that we could do here in Ohio, and that's a pre dress nitrate test. So we can collect soil, send it off to the lab and do a nitrate test as well as we can for phosphorus, potassium, and, and pH. So if we were, uh, how do you sample? Uh, take a 12-inch deep sample when the corn is 6 to 12 inches tall in a 4 to 6 leaf stage. And so the goal would be to, right before we make that side dress application of nitrogen, we would get an estimate of how much nitrate is available and then uh, reduce the recommendation based on that. The problem is, here in Ohio, because of our rainfall patterns, our weather patterns, we really flush nitrates out of the soil profile pretty quickly. So the PSNT, the pre dress nitrate test, is of greatest value in a livestock system where we're applying manure on a regular basis. Uh, the table shown here uh, is from a Purdue University publication, but basically what they show you is that as you get an increasing uh, amount of nitrates from this test, we can reduce the amount of uh, nitrogen that would be applied at a side rest time. And once you get up and uh, beyond the 20 parts per million or so, we can greatly reduce the amount of nitrogen we might be applying to the point where above 25 parts per million of nitrates in that 12 inch deep soil sample we essentially need to apply no nitrogen. So in summary, uh, soil testing in labs, uh, the key to the quality soil sample includes, uh, you know, dividing the field up in such a way that we can get uh, control or the um, area that we're collecting samples from. Um, it helps us in providing repeatability and that we do want to do a repeat of soil test over time. One of the founding, I guess, uh, points behind the uh, tri-state fertility exam is we are going to test every three to four years. And so we want to repeat sampling. We want to do some consistency in depth and in location. Um, the opportunity for grid sampling and things like that, I think, would also help uh, reduce some of that variability. And uh, that would certainly be encouraged as well. But our, our goal is to, over time, track that nutrient balance. And then soil test is a foundation, really, for the nutrient recommendations for lime, for phosphorus, and potassium.